Hey everyone, welcome to today's show. I'm going out of my comfort range today. Today's show is dessert. I don't even eat desserts. What am I thinking? I, it's still gonna be good. Stick with me, stay right there. I'm Sam the Cooking Guy. <laughs> this show is about food that's big in taste and small in effort. Yeah, man, is that good. Totally easy stuff anyone can make. Look at, look at them going already. And everything comes from a supermarket. You take all those other cooking shows like this. You don't need them anymore. This is Sam the Cooking Guy, presented by Lars Remodeling and Design. So why would I do this to myself? Put myself in the position of having to make desserts for the show. Well, there's a reason. It's my sister-in-law, Cheryl's fault. She will be here when we make one of her recipes at the end. But until then, I'm gonna coast. I'm gonna make simple stuff. I'm gonna make things that I might actually like if I like desserts. And the first thing we're doing, uh, we're not just eating bananas. We're gonna make a, a, a chocolate dipped and sprinkled frozen bananas. Here's how we start. We need a knife and we need skewers. Now, you can, as you will see if you go to the store, or wherever places that you can buy whole frozen bananas, you'll see that you can get them completely full, like a whole banana. And I find that just to be too much banana to eat. So I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna take a skewer, and you can see these are double ones. It just gives you more area to grip. Insert the skewer like thus, and there you go. I think that's a nice amount of dessert to eat, especially when we add chocolate and then whatever nonsense we'll put on the outside. They just need to go on a plate. And then you put them in the freezer, and then they're like that, see? That's what they're supposed to be like. And we're gonna deal with those in a minute. Let's just keep them in there until we're fully ready. Little pot on a little heat. Now the chocolate time. Now here it's completely up to you. You can get dark, you can get uh, semi-sweet, you can get milk chocolate. I hate milk chocolate. But don't let my personal taste guide you. I'm using uh, bittersweet. The key is, if you use low enough heat and stir, you don't need a double boiler. You can see they're already starting to melt a little bit. So we're gonna keep the heat low. But we're gonna get what's gonna go on top of these things ready, just while that's starting to do its thing. Now I feel like I gotta kinda of move. Coconut. Pecans. The crown pieces. Heath bar. Little candy heath bar. Uh oh. Heath bar. Chocolate. It's not caramel. What is it? What's that stuff called? Toffee. I went to buy just one Heath bar today and it was like $1.19 and this whole bag of these little ones was like $2.50 or something. So of course I'm gonna buy the little bags because it's not as expensive and it's good. I'm only rushing because, because I've got this stuff going on over here. Beautiful. It's gorgeous, look at that. Bittersweet chocolate, you are my hero. This you could do with kids. Mm. Love the idea of cooking with kids. I don't really want to do that. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I did it with my kids when they were little. My kids are okay in the kitchen now. They like to, they like to do stuff. Maybe it's because there's a big food thing going on here all the time, but still, let them do stuff. There you go. Here's our bananas. Here's our, here's our paintbrush. Come watch how we do this. Look at it, just like you're painting a picture. A brown chocolate picture. Then as soon as you do this, you gotta be ready to get it over there because it's starting to freeze. 
And now we go like this. Back on the plate. Now this guy. One, two, uh oh, I wiped some off. Three. Mmm. That one's gonna be good. Dark chocolate, semi sweet with coconut. That's gonna be good. Two. And this one. The pecans. This is a perfect treat for this type of year. This type of year. This type of season, this type of weather, even though it's raining today in San Diego as we shoot this, but still. Fantastico. You put them in the freezer. You come back in an hour. And they look like, well, they look like how they went in. But they're beautiful. Look at them. I suppose I should have a bite. You know, I'm not a huge, I'll go with the coconut. I like that, I like the chocolate. The chocolate around the edge, but not painted on the bottom. That's really good. I don't think it could be any better. Oh my God, I believe I'm in love with a bittersweet chocolate coated banana with coconut, frozen. This could be a problem for me. <laughs> okay, when we come back, a fruit that up until recently I did not like at all that we're making into a dessert. So good. See you in a second. When someone's getting their home remodeled, friends are asking, how's it going? Is it better than you had thought? And we are always interested in hearing the feedback from our clients and what we hope and expect is that they'll tell everybody, better than I thought, a company that cares, they value the relationship, they understand the details of my project, and they deliver on their promises. This is Sam the Cooking Guy. Now, onto something that I never used to like, figs. Now these are dried ones, and this recipe I've made before with fresh figs, but you can't always get fresh figs. It's nice to know that you can get pretty close to the same place using dried ones. So here's what they look like. They have this little wooden tree piece here that I like to cut off, the little butt piece. I don't know what to call that. It's like the stem, right? You don't want the stem. So just take the stem off, then you're just gonna cut it in half. And look at, they're like the fruit of jam. They're amazing. All right, so then we're just cutting these things. Take a pan, medium heat. Let it start to warm up. Throw some butter in. We're gonna come back to our figs. We're gonna continue the cutting, the opening, the deliciousness. We're gonna make this really good. These are gonna be really good by the time we get done with them. I'm not gonna say it's like they're gonna be reconstituted because they're not that dry. They're still pretty, you know, sticky gooey, but they're gonna come back to life a little bit in a really nice kind of way. So the pan is on the heat, and then we're gonna just take these guys, and they're all just gonna go in right now face down. And we want a little bit of cooking going on here, so we wanna see them, you know, start to sizzle a little bit. Come on, cook, 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 damn it. All right, let me get out a couple things. One is some honey we're gonna add to the pan. And they're starting to soften up a little bit. Ah, yum. Oh, I love the colors of them. I love what happens. Look at how gorgeous this is. When you start to, when they start to get all like hot and sizzly, turn them on their backs. Ow, 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 ow. I suppose I could do that off the heat.
a little bit more butter. They didn't say this was healthy. Now a little honey. Oh my. Okay, let me show you. They're almost there. I'm just turning them back down again. So now some of the honey side starts to melt in a little bit more. Soft, luscious. We're gonna serve them on this. Ah, ah, ah. So this is called labney, kefir cheese. It looks like cream cheese. It's unfreaking believable. So we put some of this right here. Some of that right there. This is done. We put some of these beautiful figs on top. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, sweetheart. I want you. I want you, Pikachu. This guy, this guy, this guy. Got you, sucker. Come on. There. Now, a little bit of this little drizzly, melty, buttery sauce there. Hold on. Nobody move. Nobody move. Ah! I didn't do it. I was supposed to toast these almonds. Why me? Why does this always happen to me? I'm such a... Dang! You can't just use plain almonds because they'll have no crunch to them. As good as it's gonna be for now. Okay. Some almonds, ow, 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 ow. Real hot, real hot. Two things, two things, two things. A little lemon zest. Don't think this is a weird dessert, it's not. It's a delicious dessert. And some nice flaky sea salt, just to give a little bit of counterbalance to the sweet that's in here. Wow. I'm telling you, this labney, this kefir cheese, with the buttery, honey sweetness of these figs, the crunch of the almonds, and that salt. Oh, oh snap, is that good? Don't forget to toast the almonds. That was almost a disaster. This is far from a disaster. This is outstanding. All right. We'll come back. Brownies. I know, I know. Brownies. Woo, brownies. That's what I said. So I made them for a party. Apparently the only brownie recipe you'll ever need. Don't go away. I don't always go out to buy fresh seafood, but when I do, I go to Catalina Offshore Product, one of Southern California's premier seafood purveyors. And for you, that means some of the freshest seafood in San Diego. And if you can't get here, you can check out their online store for an incredible selection, especially the amazing sushi grade quality fish. But don't just take my word for it, because some of San Diego's best chefs shop here too. Catalina Offshore Products, your trusted source for fresh local seafood. This is Sam, the cooking guy. All right, so we've done some good work so far today. Some sweet work, but that's desserts and, and they're delicious. Last, going over two segments, is this recipe for my sister-in-law Cheryl's double chocolate brownies that she claims the only brownie recipe you'll ever need. Do we believe that? Well, we could ask her, because she's sitting right here. Awkward? A little bit awkward. So, I needed a brownie recipe for something the other day. Of course I go to Cheryl, because she's the, she's the baker, she's the Martha Stewart of the family. And she goes, I got the brownie recipe for you. So she sent it to me, and I made it, and the people just freaked out. I swear to God. I made one, I made. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I made one, one little change to it, two small changes that we'll make today, that are not noticeable, but, but are good. 
And by the way, so this is, look at how original shape recipe. It's with dirty, weathered, chocolate stained all over the thing. And she was so sweet to bring measuring cups and measuring utensils because she knows I don't like to measure. <laughs> Happy using those. I don't need no measuring things. Preheat oven to 325. It's done. In a small bowl, combined. Sorry, you can have to back up just for one second. You and Lewis. You need flour, right? Flour, nobody move. Three quarters of a cup of flour. I do have one measuring cup, this guy, that I like to use. And I can figure out what three quarters of this is without markings. Now, should it be sifted, sister-in-law, or not? We're not sifting. Flour, soda. I never know which one is which. Baking soda, quarter teaspoon. That's the one that you use to get the smell out of your garbage cans, right? Yep. Quarter it makes teaspoon. a huge difference if you use baking soda or baking powder. Okay, well I need a quarter teaspoon that looks to me like this much. <laughs> Can't imagine that anything of that small little amount will make a difference, but surely there's other oh, sugar, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I should have known. Okay, now you're good. Sugar. Here you go. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. Uh, so combine, now combine butter, sugar, and water. So watch this. A third of a cup is this much. Because it's got the little marks on here. That's easy to do. But I like to put it in a couple pieces so it starts to melt evenly. Sugar. Wait, Sam, you're supposed oh, to put sugar in there. This is not supposed to have sugar in it. supposed to put the sugar in there. Pardon my language. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. I have to redo this now. Fortunately, I have all the stuff out. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. Why'd you let me do that? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Three quarters of, now apparently neither was I. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. All right. This is now useless. Now we've got to redo this. So now this is, this is three quarters of a cup of flour, right? The baking soda, I'm not even using that this time, I'm just doing this, this, and salt. Quarter teaspoon of salt is exactly that amount. I'm quite confident to that. Now, uh, in a saucepan, combine butter, sugar, water. Here's the change. I'm not using water. I'm using something that I don't have in the house. Sorry. Thought I had it. Bourbon, we're using bourbon. Okay. Two tablespoons of water. One. Two. Now we mix this, uh, bring just to a boil, remove from heat. So now let me get back to this. So this is done, right? That's all that is? Is that correct? Yeah. This is just this, right? We're in good shape. <laughs> Here we go, just to a boil. And then we need semi-sweet chocolate chips, 12 ounces. We need half the pack, so we go like this. You open it up, you squeeze at the halfway point, and you dump those in. Don't need to be any more exact than that. And then this just gets mixed. What is nice about this recipe that my sister-in-law has pointed out is that you're not using a thousand pots. There's no double boiler worrying about the chocolate, any of that nonsense. It's just nice and simple. So eggs. Hey, take it off the heat. Two yeah. eggs. Heat's off. Stir them in one at a time. And vanilla. And vanilla. Sorry. How much vanilla? Teaspoon. Teaspoon of vanilla. But look what I'm using. I'm using barrel-aged bourbon vanilla. I'm just keeping with that bourbon theme a little bit. And now two eggs, right, Cher? Yep. One egg, and then beat this in. Look at me, I'm baking. <laughs> I'm Bobby Crocker. One more egg. <laughs> okay, now the dry ingredients go in here, I think. Is that right? Yeah. I'm just going to check, because I can't count on you. 
at eggs one at a time, beating well after each gradually blend in flour mixture, stirring remaining Wait, chips and nuts. Wait, you take the pan off the stove, there you go. Okay, so now the flour will go in. And it'll go a little bit at a time. I don't want to overwhelm. All right. The rest of the chips are coming up, and then nuts. Cheryl says, I use walnuts. I will use walnuts. You could use any kind of nut you want, but when Cheryl says to use it, you should use it. Because she's the baker in the family. Pecans would be good with the bourbon, though. Pecans? Okay, I don't have pecans. Thanks a lot. I do have pecans, but I'm using them for something else. So now I need this freaking walnuts. We're going to be fine. And the rest of it's yours. That. And then this. I feel like I got to get this. So like walnuts? Can everybody see? If nobody answers me, I'm going to assume that's yes. a yes. <sighs> Just breathe. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. <sighs> I got a parchment up a pan. I got a, I have trouble getting the thing out when I made this for this thing the other day. Okay. I'll just keep this slightly warm. We take a break, we come back, I get it in the pan, we bake it, we eat it, we blah, 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 blah. We get it, right? We know the drill, don't go away. This is Sam, the cooking guy. I'm a little rested, not much. So, uh, Cheryl says an eight by eight. This'll work, it's an eight by eight. I should grease it. Yeah. Can I just parchment it? I would, the I would grease the bottom parchment and then grease the... Parchment. Now that's being over the top silly, don't you think? It's, it'll be easier to get out of the pan. Well, the parchment's not good. No, I'm going to try no, it my own way. No, you make a sling and you lift I'm going to make a sling. Oh, yeah. You watched me make a sling. But I'm going to make a sling without greasing. And then we'll see what happens. Maybe the non-baking part of the family will teach the baking part of the family something today. I gotta grease it. But I'm only greasing it for one reason. Not to prove you right. Because I'm sitting here? No. I don't want to have no success. I'm just worried about these edges. If the batter comes in contact without butter, that part will stick. Now I'm gonna do this. Because the damn And then thing... make one going the other way. Why do I have to have one the other way? Because then it won't stick on that side. I have to do this? I freaking hate baking. It's too damn fussy. It's too fussy. Look what you have to do. There's none of this in my other world. I even like burning these. I will say people thought they were amazing though. Amazing. Welcome to my cooking show. We're gonna spend an hour doing one thing today. All right. 30 minutes or 35? Because it says 30 to 35, and I know you, you have bakers. You check it after 30. Oh, with the toothpick thing. 30 minutes on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. Buzzer just went off. We're going to check. All right, so, okay, here's the test. You take a toothpick, in this case a little skewer. I like to put it on an angle. If it comes out clean, it's baked. If it still has a bunch of stuff stuck to it, it needs five more minutes. Let's have a look. Do you want to come watch with me? With Lewis? You can bring Lewis. Went in kind of easy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So much for the 30 minutes. 30 to 35. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Okay, so now I haven't tried this yet. Oh, it's gonna be no problem. Uh, I usually wait until it's way cooler. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, come on. Oh, wait, sorry, that was just that one. Wait. Wow. Okay, the double chocolate, I'm getting it right now in the smell. Oh, shit. 
Oh crap. It's <laughs> too hot. We went through my, just let it cool. Should I've let it cool some more? I, I thought I had it. It was right there, right there. It still tastes good. Oh, I'm hitting nuts all the way down. Is that beautiful or what? Wow, oh, it's still that gooey. Look, it is really. So Cheryl said, better underdone than overdone. And then never was there truer brownie <laughs> advice, right? A dry brownie is a piece of junk. A moist brownie is a thing of beauty. Yeah. It's gonna be so hot. It is? Yes. It's just cake. How hot can cake get? It's really hot. Mm. Oh, oh, hot. Mm. oh my oh, god. god. <laughs> oh my god. I like the bourbon. Mm-hmm. The bourbon's good. And it's not overwhelming. No. Oh my god. This is better than the batch I made the other day. Yep. I think I might have put more bourbon. You could actually just scoop it out and put ice cream on it and nobody would. You could. You make like a if you were that Sunday. kind of person. <laughs> wow. Do you know how much hot yoga I'm going to have to do to get rid of all the chocolate and sweets I've had today? I'm going to have to go like a six hour class. Well worth it. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, make all of the stuff we've made today, especially these. On my website, my favorite sister-in-law's double chocolate brownies with bourbon, courtesy of Sam the Cooking Guy. All right, thanks for hanging out with us today. Make all the food. Don't eat the same thing all the time. Tell your friends about us. All the episodes are on the website, cookingguy.com. Go away. Have a good rest of your week or weekend whenever you are watching this. See you. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>